I remember it well. She hurt her ankle. So, as far as this match is concerned, well, this is the bottom half of the draw, and all other quarterfinal places have been decided. And the big shock, of course, is the number eight seed, the All England champion, Okuhara, beaten by Pontip Baranaprasetsuk. As you can see in the other big news from this bottom half of the draw is the Olympic champion, Li Shuerei. She's been beaten by Tai Su Ying of Chinese Her Taipei. So here comes Bei Yung Ju, a left handed Korean. Sign and AWOL. A former world number one. Three times she's been a semi finalist here. 2012, 13, and last year as well. Lost out to Lee Shuere, who we've just seen. Lost earlier today to Tai Su Ying. Lee Shuere lost that final last year. Carolina Marin, of course, was the winner a year ago. So. Amin Amin Mir of Iran are on par for this one. So Bei Yungju, 25 years of age, a left-hander, up a couple of places in the world ranking today, up to 13. That's been as high as five, a total of 12 weeks as number five in the world. As I say, beaten finalist six years ago. And to get to that final, I remember she beat the number one seed, the world number one, Wang Yi Han. So, with a couple of semi-finals here in Malaysia as well, a victory yesterday. Gosh, she does play a lot of left-handers, doesn't she? That final I was talking about. And Linda Zetchuri of Bulgaria. She's a left-hander too. 32 minutes for that victory yesterday. Sign and Abel. Well, she's been three times the semi-finalist, as I say. Okay. Turned 26 last month. And she's gone down two places in the world ranking this week to number eight. But did spend a total of 14 weeks as world number one. Now... Her first round opponent, Ni Chiron Jindapon from Thailand. Gosh, it was a one-sided second game, wasn't it? I suspect that was the drift coming into play. 30 minutes for that victory. So this is only uh, Sain and Ewell's fourth tournament of the year. But this will be the 13th meeting between these two players. And of the previous 12, Sine and Awil has won eight of them, including the last three. And the last time they played was the Sudaman Cup in Dongguan last year. Sine and Awil coming through in three games. That was the group stage, an hour and eight minutes for that three-game victory. So as far as Bei Yongju, this her eighth tournament of the year for Sine and Awil, only her fourth as we... We look at our umpire and our service judge. Obviously working in pairs, the court officials today, because Johan de Klerk of South Africa. And Hermin Amin there of Iran were working together earlier. They did the Victor Axelson match in the singles match. So Bei Yung Ju and Sain and Awil were the two beaten semi-finalists from last week in India. So it's a tough draw, isn't it? The meeting in the second round here in Malaysia. Withdrew from three events earlier in the year because of injury problems, Sain and Awil. Side Modi Grand Prix gold event in luck now in India, the Thailand Masters, where she was the number one seed. I think she actually had to withdraw from that because she was selected for 
the uh, South Asian Games, and they were both at the same time. Not allowed to enter two events at once, are you? So if she hadn't have withdrawn, I think she would have been withdrawn by the BWF. So the player's just about ready. Yeah. Good smash down the backhand side of the left hander. Good year last year, not only became world number one, uh, five finals from 13 tournaments, winning two of them. Two titles that Sina Nawal did win were both on home soil. Four. India Long. Grand Prix gold event, she retained that title that she had won the previous occasion. And the India Super Series, and I guess the fact that she was defending winner points from the India Super Series and the fact she lost in the semi-final is the reason why she's perhaps gone down a couple of rungs in the world ranking today. Five. Lost. It's going to be interesting to see because um, these two players are... are two of the players that normally rely the most on accuracy and, and shot precision and I think Bayung Ju is, is in for a tough time because I feel that she needs to be accurate even more than Saina does. I feel Saina's better at this windy conditions playing style. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see in this match. I feel the Bei Yung Ju, a bit Whoa. like Sun Wan Ho in our previous match, is, tends to sometimes be underestimated and sort of goes under the radar a little bit. But uh, maybe also a, a lack of form, perhaps, in the early stages of yeah. last year. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's, um, it's fair to say that she's not a natural or good mover on the court. She, she needs mm. to uh, work on her movement and and be in really, really good shape. When she is that, she plays really, really well. Beautiful shots, very, very accurate. Um, good angles from that uh, left hand there. But, um, but uh, speed-wise, I think she can't really compete with um, the top five players. And that's why it's also it's very very uh, surprising to me that Okuhara lost today to um, uh, Pontip Burana Prasetsuk. I, I thought she would have excellent possibilities in in these conditions. Mm. Very very quick player, excellent technique. That's that's puzzling that she's out. Mm. Over. Nine, 
Going wide. I'm interested that you don't feel that the left hander is can really match the speed of the top players nowadays because you know it was only 2013 when she won a bronze medal at the World Championships in Guangzhou. A year later, 2014, wins a bronze medal at the Asian Games. The, and I'm, it, it was your talk about Okuhara as well, who we saw at the All England was so fast yeah. and at the Super Series finals. And I'm wondering, even in, in the last couple of years, whether the level of women's singles has gone up. There's no doubt in my opinion that the level has gone up. There's been um, more players. There's been no uh, good draws in this uh, Super Series tournament and Premier Series where there's 32 players in. You have to be there from round one. There's no easy opponents, and uh, and there's a lot of uh, new countries emerging on the international scene, um, and that's really refreshing. Yeah, I concur with that. Well, it's a very handsome lead for Sina Newell. Eight-point advantage. Vimal Kumar will be very, very happy with that. And we often discuss um, how much the coaches should um, should tell the players in the um, mid-game intervals and so on. But here I feel, even though we can see that Vimal Kumar has already left the court, you can't see that here's the Korean coach in the picture. But here it's, it's appropriate because when you're leading 11-3 against a player who is who's a good player, you must expect some kind of adjustment to come from your mm. opponent. So try to to force uh, to to forecast what, what's going to happen. Yeah, um, might be appropriate. Otherwise, if it was 11-3 against uh, a qualifying player, then maybe just play on and focus on mm. your own game. Well, the Korean coach, Park Tae Sang. Had a little chat to him last week in Delhi. He's yeah. a very smiley, lovely person. Uh, very serious when he's coaching, of course, but... He's probably thinking about the time when he won a decisive match in the Thomas Cup team against Denmark. That's <laughs> probably why he's smiling. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Saw some, I'm making the tease tonight, I can see. <laughs> yeah. It's a good rally, isn't it? That is a very good rally. Yeah, she's struggling to get down low to that backhand net position. Bei Young Ju. That's going to be the longest rally of the match. I wonder if it's the longest of the day so far. Of our matches, that is. What, how long was it? We, we had one 37 of... in the men's singles the last yeah, match. Yeah, that's, that's exactly. Oh, 33. line judge yeah there it is again that backhand net for yeah. Bei Young Ju I don't know whether it's the injury problems or whether it's just a problem anyway also a very very good shot from uh, Sana Nival very quick um, movement and it 
seems that it would land really close to the net, so requires an extra half step from uh, Bay. Yeah, there's a challenge here. On the on the baseline. Yeah. What? Yeah. It's always a difficult one to challenge, isn't it? But sometimes players, you know, you just get that instinct as you hit it. Oh yeah, yeah. It was in. Good challenge. Challenge successful. Very good challenge. Correction in. Service over. Six, fourteen. Hey. over. Oh, that Seven is over. delightful. Yeah. Wonderful 16, skill. Seven. Eight. Looked as if she was going to lift it and then just yeah. check the shot. Yeah. That was a very good decision. The, the net shot from Bay simply spun Seven. too far away from the net. So Sina had all opportunities. Is that her first service error? I think so. Yeah. again. A whole oh, host of game point opportunities for Sina Newell. So, opening game, 21-10. Just 12 minutes for Sina and Awal. Number three seed to close out that opening game.
Now, become a feature of her game, the retying of the shoelaces at the intervals. Sign and air will. Now, I wonder what Park Tai Sang had to say to Bei Young Ju. Yeah, she probably needs to try to control the match a little bit more with a more attacking style, but uh, I don't think she's capable of doing it. She's got quite some strapping on that uh, left knee as well. Not only the white bandage that you can see below the knee, but she's also got some skin colored bandage above the knee. Yeah. Great judgment. I'm looking straight down that line. And it was just when it was falling towards the floor that it sort of drifted out. Mm. It's going well wide. Interesting that Sina was playing the drop shots to the middle of the court there, <coughs> to the middle of the uh, to the middle line, and not wanting to give Bay these angles that are so lethal from her. Mm, that stayed in. I think it's very, very important for the Korean, isn't it? She got to stop this this run. I mean, she really wasn't in the opening game for a large part. She's got to stay with Sina and Awol here at the start of the second. And, and find some kind of winning formula. And right now she must be in a, in a, in a situation where she feels like, I don't know how to win points against, yeah. against Sina. I might win once or twice, but uh, it, it's more luck than um, actually a plan. I didn't see much of, uh, of Sina playing in India Open, but I remember seeing her play at the All England and, and now here. And, and even though she hasn't been challenged a lot here, I, I think it's safe to say that her, her form is, is progressing in the right direction after her injury. Yeah. Found the line again. Five, two. Well, it was interesting what you were saying earlier, Steen, about how women's singles has improved in the last couple of years, literally, because Bei Young Ju was one of those players that I thought about four or five years ago was going to be the big breakthrough player. Three Super Series tournament finals, last one was India of 2011. So, you know, since then, if the Grames progressed, and she hasn't really, then... Yeah, then... Uh, yeah. You once in a while, when you meet the right opponents that suits your playing style and so on, you make good results, whereas others, you are not really able to, to challenge them. But I think, I think she's been prone to a lot of injuries. Um, Three, mm. Bay. Hey. 
Oh. Very badly deflected by the neck cord. But it, it's happened really, really quickly, this increase of, um, of um, competition in, in women's singles. I mean, it's like almost like a, a team bicycle race that Lisha Rui came forward and set the standards in, in 2012. 2013, Rachina Gintanen takes over and takes the lead for yeah. a short period. Then um, Saina Nival and Carolina Marin emerges on the stage, and now Natsumi Okuhara is sort of um, giving it a notch more. So, yeah, you really got to develop if you want to stay on, on top of this uh, game in, in women's singles. Yeah, and let's not forget about Tai Su Ying either. From exactly. Chinese Taipei. And she, she's going to be really, really dangerous in this tournament, I feel. We know that Okuhara skipped the India Open, um, wasn't totally feeling well or a little injury or something like that. But, um, but Tai Shi Ying was there at India Open and, and she has the, the um, skills to do well here in, in Malaysia. Mm. It's all running away from the Bay Yung Ju at the moment, isn't it? And it's all due to the very good play from Simon Awell. Mm. Creeping up, 34. to the mid game interval. interval. Same score line as we had in the opening game. The eight point advantage to sign an AWO. <laughs> Such a nice man is Vimal Kumar. A little pat on the back for his player. Well done. Doing well, keep going. Yeah, and, and now, I mean, there's not too much to be afraid of now for, for the Indian uh, player and, and her coach, because if Bay had something in her toolbox, she would have used it now. Perhaps there's one last little desperation um, charge ahead of um, the Korean player here but otherwise this is um, this is going to be um, smooth sailing for sign up That's a fantastic rally we have yeah. here. This must be the longest rally of uh, the day. Oh, yeah. Very good rally. And all of the early stages, it was Bei yung -ju who was commanding the rally, dictating the yes, pace. Yeah. Well, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. 37 shots equals our longest of the day. Yeah, that was a good clear. Great defense, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Taken off the body. Just guided in the right direction. No, it's 
found it in. Disappointed Bay Young Ju. Quite a bit in, I suspect. Just wide, but look how short that clear was. This is more or less resigned. Bay. Yeah. Oh, that's a delightful backhand from Sine and Awa. Take a look at this. Look at that. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah, terrific net shot from Bei Youngju. A moment of defiance. Well, I have to say, I'm, I mean, all credit to Sina Newell. I think she's played really well, but this isn't the sort of match I was expecting. I was really looking forward to this. I thought this might be quite a close one. Yeah. I... You don't I'm agree? No, no, no I, I more or less expected this. Yeah. Because, because um, I mean, sometimes a change in playing conditions uh, evens up players, and sometimes it divides players, and, and here I think it divides them. Yeah. Um, so one of the European journalists, Mark Fielden from uh, Ireland, saying that uh, it was very windy and uh, if it was okay, even though it was the same for all, and I had to reply to him that it's definitely not the same for all. Mm -hmm. It's a challenge here. Oh, well, I thought that landed in. I thought the line judge was correct on that. But Hawkeye is going to tell us. Oof! Out by a whisker. So that's a great challenge. Just apologises. She yeah. did didn't go over the net. I don't think. Oh, 
Thought there was a bit of hesitation there from yeah, Bayou and Yeah, there was. This one here, is she going to leave it? No, decides to play it. And plays a beautiful shot off it too. to change the shuttle, but umpire agrees with sign and Oval. This is five straight points. And only five points in it now. Half the ten-point deficit. landed in as well and, and she's totally controlling it now from the front court uh, bay Match point opportunities. It's gone long. And the match to the number three seed, Sign and Awell. 21 10, 21 16. A little over 32 minutes in total. Yeah, that movement does look much better now, doesn't it? confirmation that she's through to the quarter final 21 10 21 16.
So just one more match to come tonight, and it's men's doubles, and it features the world number ones, uh, Lee Yong Day and Yu Young Sung, up against the number one pair on the Super Series standings, Go V Shem and Tam Wee Kyong. Yeah, Malaysian pair. Well, Govi Shem is a former champion here. Endo and Hawakawa, as you can see, came through an absolute thriller in their second round oh, encounter. Number five seats.